and uh, and I was kind of wanting to get up on stage and perform. I was do, I was kind of dabbling with stand up as a at the at Yuck Yucks in in the comedy club in Ottawa. And uh, so when you say dabbling, well, I was doing stand up. I was doing stand up, but I I never really got to really you know a level where I was kind of I was doing it every week. I was going down every week for a couple of years. And actually, the reason I stopped was because uh, the 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 rap group got kind of uh, sort of a record deal, basically, and mm. I kind of went focused on that for a while and stopped doing stand up. But yeah, the club in Ottawa, Yuck Yucks in Ottawa, still there. It's moved, but it's um, it's owned by Howard Wagman, who's uh, it's the Yuck Yucks is kind of like the improv of Canada. You know, it's a chain all across the country. Mark Breslin, I'm sure you know Mark. He's uh, he started it, and uh, and it's uh, he's kind of like uh, it was it was it was wild because like. I don't know, it was something about the 80s, the 90s, before the internet, right? You'd go down to a comedy club and you'd find out about stuff just through word of mouth, like the rap music and like comedy. So I would go down to the comedy club and I remember Norm MacDonald would come through and he was probably 25 years old, right? And I'm 16 in the audience. And then I got to become this huge fan of Norm and he was Norm. But back then, there wasn't a lot of people doing stand-up like Norm. Like, there wasn't this sort of angle of sort of this absurdity to it, this, this sort of, this sort of, it was a more of a structured, down-the-middle yeah. way of doing stand-up back then. And, and so Norm was this sort of, you know, you know. It was uh, a curveball. Yeah, this sort of curveball, and we just couldn't get enough of it. So every time we was in town, we'd be down there. But <coughs> Howard Wagman told me this, this story about Norm, and, uh, you know, the first time he came down to do uh, stand-up, at Yuck Yucks in Ottawa, and he got off stage and he was disappointed in how it went. Norm was. He said, I'm never doing this again. He walked down the street. <laughs> Howard Wagman chased him down Spark Street in Ottawa and said, no, that was great. You're coming back. And he made him come back, and the, the rest is history. Well, Norm was yeah. a legitimate genius. Yeah. Like a genius of mm-hmm. life, like a, a, a rare specimen. Like genius in not, not just that his comedy was brilliant, but just, just like, look at this. I've never seen this before. Mm-hmm. Like a totally different kind of human. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And genuinely always funny. Like every conversation was funny. Mm-hmm. He was just funny. I was on a plane with him accidentally twice. Nice. Twice. That must have been. Twice on mm-hmm. two separate mm-hmm. occasions. <laughs> just totally random. Uh-huh. We sat next to each other on the plane. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the last one, it was so funny. Because he was telling me about how he quit smoking. Yeah, I quit smoking. It's a fucking, <laughs> turns out it's real bad for you. Like, this whole thing about quitting smoking. And he's, yeah. we're talking about it, like how hard was it to quit? This mm-hmm. whole thing. The moment we land, he walks <laughs> into the gift shop, buys a pack of cigarettes, and he's lighting them before he gets out the door. Uh, yeah, and I yeah. go, I thought you quit. He goes, I did, mm-hmm. but all that talking about it made me want to smoke. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably all an elaborate setup, right? He probably was planning it the whole way. I don't know. Who knows? He probably doesn't even smoke. He was just doing it as a gag. No, he was, he was, he was, he was. Well, he was into gambling too, right? So yeah. like people that have those kind of like impulse control issues, like gambling is a big impulsive thing. Like, I'm mm-hmm. fucking bet. I'm gonna bet on it. Mm-hmm. You know, let's put mm-hmm. the bet. Put it back. Put it. Yeah. All of it. All of it. That's you know rough. that kind of wild, crazy sports gambling too. That's not a good addiction to have, especially when you have money, right? <sighs> you know, stand-up comedy wasn't a mainstream thing then. You know, it was it was pretty big, but not in Ottawa. It was sort of almost like you felt like you were going somewhere that you weren't supposed to go. Yeah. You go down in the basement. Yeah. I was 16 years old. I'm in a bar. You know, and there's some guy yeah. on stage and. They're not talking about Norm Macdonald on, on television yet. He hadn't gone to SNL yet. He had, I remember I'd see him and my friends would see him. And then we'd go to school and we'd tell our friends, you got to go see this guy, Norm Macdonald. He'd come every three times a year. And every time he'd come, we'd be there. And it was just like this sort of myth. It was a mythology to it. You know? And then all of a sudden he got, we heard he moved to, he moved to Los Angeles because he was writing for Roseanne. You know? And we all heard about this. And it was this sort of, you know, all the... You know the amateur comics, the you know, up and the kids up there are doing it. And well, I guess I was the kid doing that. Everyone else was kind of in their twenties, but thirties. But everybody was just kind of like, "There is hope. We can we can get out of Ottawa, man." You know, so yeah, you know, and, something, uh, and, something out there. And then SNL and everything. And it was just amazing to watch watch him do that. But and you know, I was having a good chat with uh, with Adam at, at the club. You know about Norm because he was, of course, famously his his sidekick, his sidekick on his show. Yeah. So it was such a shame to see. 
Norm disappear like that. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, so, just uh, He was talking about coming out here, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's, uh, it's, you know, so much has happened since I was here last. I got a lot of stuff I wanted. First of all, before. 